Hello and welcome to the York Creatives Podcast. My name is Ben Porter and each week you can join me as I chat to someone from York's creative community. This week's guest is Natalie Rowe. Nat is a film writer, director and producer with a background in theatre. Having worked on big site specific theatre productions such as Blood and Chocolate, The Minster Mystery Plays and for Theatre Mill, she took that experience and started her own company Plotting Films, creating a medieval comedy series called Tales of Bacon. We discuss her research and writing process, running a successful crowdfunding campaign, coming up with practical and creative solutions for props, and the wider filmmaking scene in York. So Nat, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, good to be here. So tell me about your first memorable experience of filmmaking. Oh wow, Um, well I remember making films for a long time, like I remember my friend had one, like an old VCR type camcorder in the Mm. 80s, Uh, that's going back and showing how old I am, but we made a a series then of short films uh, which were the Adventures of Grandma Nat, um, which was played by me, Um, and I wore like... um, my friend's dad's suit and things. It was kind of, it, it was really ridiculous, but that was definitely the first kind of foray into filmmaking I did. And then I got into it by basically doing a lot of theatre stuff. Mm. Um, and I did a degree in theatre film and TV at York St John. And I went into it loving theatre and wanting to do theatre and like thinking film would be an interesting side thing to have on my CV and then ended up leaving completely in love with film, Mm. (laughs) like wanting to make films. Um, I spent some time in America as well, which um, I learned how to make films on Super 8. Cool. Um, And that's still, for me, like the epitome of filmmaking. Like I kind of wish all films were made like that because uh, it's just such a simple and yet perfect way uh, to to tell a story. So you mentioned architecture often influences the art in a city. Yes, yes. Can you tell me a bit more about that? Sure. Um, Well, I'd spent quite a few years making films in York, um, but all of them were contemporary. Um, And then on the flip side, the theatre work I'd done was always period. Um, But none of them were medieval. And it just seemed like for a medieval city like York, that just seemed mad to me. Like, mm. it's such a, a beautiful, beautiful place. Like, the walls, um, Clifford's Tower, you know, the Minster, all of these gorgeous buildings and the interiors that you can see as well. I was like, why don't we use these? You know, why don't we use these to tell a story? So I had this crazy idea about a pardoner one day. Um, and so it really seemed like, yeah, why don't we do a medieval web series mm. for a change? So tell me about Tales of Bacon. What was your research process in kind of building that story? Yeah, so um, I originally had the idea one day um, on a car journey, a long car journey from London to York. And I started thinking about sort of journeys and the Canterbury Tales and Chaucer, just like, I don't know, the kind of silly things you kind of have in your mind. And I started thinking about pardoners. Um, And pardoners are a really interesting um, occupation because basically it was a guy who would sell you a pardon for your sins or he would sell you a bit of a a, a holy relic like a bit of a saint a toenail or a finger bone or something and because of that you would be um, you'd be close to the saint you'd be you'd be closer to god you'd become holier because of it and everybody seemed to know even in the middle ages that this was completely fraudulent <laughs> like that this was like uh, chaucer talks about how the pardoner in his tale in the canterbury tales uses pig bones instead of saint's bones mm-hmm. like so it was it just seemed like a kind of this was the del boy and rodney kind of <laughs> way, kind of occupation of the middle ages or like a, a used car salesman mm. like he was completely against the society the very religious society and he was kind of playing it and i thought this is a fascinating thing why aren't there more um, stories about pardoners. So why a web series? Um, I'd worked on web series before, so I really liked the format. Um, for me, it was like it was like a short film where you could have each episode would be a complete little story, like just a short eight minute story, but you could also have a narrative arc that would go throughout all of the episodes as well. So from a storytelling point of view, you could do interesting things sort of within an episode and then overall as well. So was Tales of Bacon the first thing that you wrote yourself? 
Um, I had written a short called Foley Folly, which is still in post-production, but hopefully we're going to be releasing that later this year. I'd written things before at uni, but there had been like a, a real break where I just volunteered on lots of other people's projects, hmm. which was wonderful. Um, but I was beginning to think, you know what, I maybe, maybe I want to try this myself. Maybe I do want to just kind of break out a little bit um, and play with some ideas so Tales of Bacon was the, the, the biggest thing that I'd written and I couldn't have done it without Max like Max G's a screenwriting phenomenon. So once you'd written it you decided to crowdfund it is that right? Yes so we had a crowdfunding campaign uh, via Indiegogo and it was really successful uh, it was amazing um, yeah yeah uh, it can happen um, yes yeah, so we got over our target we had a range of really really great perks like pardons handwritten pardons that people could have um, and that kind of thing so that was that was quite fun and um, about 50% of the people who crowdfunding us didn't weren't people we knew um they were people who had seen us via twitter and had kind of bought into our medieval um kind of imagery and theme and seemed just thought that it was a really good idea and so they started giving us money and, and those guys have followed us through as supporters um and they're still like sharing our stuff liking it even now when the series is coming out so you brought some props with you today do you want to yeah, sure. Yes, yeah, so um, yeah, I just brought a couple of things. We use these goblets um, numerous times, actually, uh, like you do when you get a good prop. Um, these are actually from the Jorvik groups. Um, we bought this from the Richard III Museum. <laughs> um, this actually was from the Viking Festival, um, just from their market. It's a rather beautiful crossbow, um, which was plain wood when we got it. And then I gave it to um, Amelia Tyler, um, who is mostly known for her acting and voiceover work. But she also is insanely good at um, making props. Um, so she did all this wonderful, wonderful decorative work on it um, and made it into something fantastic. And you can actually fire it as well. Oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> yes. What does it fire? It does. It fires little bolts, uh, little wooden bolts. Um Yes, so that does get used in the series. It gets used by um, John the Very Ready, um, the hermit. He attacks some plague victims with it in episode three. Um, (laughs) Yes, and we also have um, this rather wonderful um, helm. Now, this is a plastic version, um, but it was based on a metal helm, which the um, Dane Law Museum, uh, Yorkshire Museum of Farming, Mm -hmm. have at Merton Park. Um, so they have loads of props and costumes, and we, we hired a lot from them. Can hmm. um, I look? Yes, you may. Yes. Oh, wow, it's really light. It does look kind of very real. Yeah, so the issue we had with this... It looks fabulous. <laughs> um, the issue we had with the metal version was that um, you couldn't actually see out of it very particularly well. Mm-hmm. Um, and we needed our knight to be involved in a sword fight, which happens on the beach at, in the finale episode. Um, so for basically the actor's safety, we needed to come up with a solution. So we got Simon Brody, who again is a wonderful prop maker in York, mm. to borrow the helmet and to make a plastic replica. So during the fight scene, you could swing, you could see perfectly, you had, um, nothing was impeding your vision. And we cut into that scenes the fight scene with the full helmet on which has a front piece as well Mm. um and honestly i watched that fight back and i can't tell which helmets which they just look so so perfectly identical so simon did a great job yeah he's great i actually used to share a a studio with him oh right Um, yes when we were in stonebow Yes, so he's yeah, great. Yeah. I remember one day him and Jamie McKellar took apart a chainsaw and put a smoke machine in it. So right. When they revved it, it kind of shot the smoke out. So that impressed me. <laughs> so tell me about your distribution and marketing process now. They kind of um, the episodes are coming out. Yes, so um, they're coming out at the moment. Um, they come out every Thursday, every Thaddeus Thursday is what we call them. They started the first of February and they've been coming out every Thursday since then. So the finale episode comes out Thursday the 1st of March and then we uh, will be releasing a blooper reel um, the Thursday after that as well. Uh, And that's because this week we hit our 5,000 mark 
for the pilot episode. Um, so the pilot episode came out the same time as the Indiegogo campaign happened. Mm-hmm. So it's been sort of slowly ticking away, and this week we finally got 5,000 views, which I think is a great achievement. Yeah, so, um, a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. So uh, once we've got the, the series online, we've decided we'll get a, a blooper reel out there the next week as well. So yeah. what's the, um, the wider filmmaking community like in York? It's pretty amazing. Um, I started in um, 2012. I did a lot of work with Milestone. Um, I worked on Whoops, their feature film. Mm. Um, And that was just like an epiphany moment for me. Like shortly after then I moved um, to York. Um, I started getting professional work doing running and then art department jobs and later costume jobs. And just everyone is so supportive Um, very creative you know there's fresh stuff coming out all of the time Um, I worked with a a really talented guy called um, Oliver Mitchell recently Um, basically I just saw a crowdfund that he was doing Uh, he was doing a Roman drama called Il Constantia Mm -hmm. and um, I thought wow this is this is ambitious I love it (laughs) let's see if I can help so I went and um, just did some running kind of driving for him and like from that I've met a whole new bunch of people kind of fairly recent graduates um who are very talented so i think that kind of give and take is what really makes york special casting is easy when you when you're in york because you can just go and watch a theater production Mm. in virtually any menu uh, venue you know you can go to to an old bakery and there'll be some theater going on there if you could do one thing to improve the york art scene what would you do Oh, what a good question. Um, I would like us to all be able to meet up a bit more regularly. Um, There were, there's been a few times when we've tried to kind of get regular screenings off the ground and that kind of thing. Um, It'd be great if that was possible, even if it wasn't every month, even if it was, I don't know, every six months even might be Mm. good and we could all kind of see new work um, that would be really good. Um, the Filmmakers Coalition, I found, has been great over the years. Um, I think we're not, it's not quite as used as it used to be. Mm. I think it's very much used by students a lot these days yep. and not as much kind of the sort of semi professional and kind of big community outreach kind of thing isn't happening as much. But uh, that was a great forum, you know, it was a really good way of meeting people and kind of seeing what people are doing and, and what's out there. So mm. maybe if we, if we kind of start kick-starting that a bit more. Yeah. Um, so what's next for you in 2018? Um, I would like to um, get Tales of Bacon into a few festivals. Um, that's kind of been our, our goal for the whole series. We also, um, Foley Folly, which is the shot I I wrote, um, that should be getting finished and you'll start seeing that coming out as well. So um, cool. yeah, that, that's going to be nice to, to get that out. I really want to make a radio drama um, I've had a script for a while which was actually written by my great aunt um, who's no longer with us and she wrote uh, this radio drama which I think never got performed um, about Wrens, about the Women's Royal Navy mm. um, in World War Two, uh, which she, she was part of and it's got so many great female characters in it and this has always been something I've really been driven to try and do is create female characters and create opportunities for uh, female actors. Mm. Um, So that's something I want to try. I imagine it's going to be a little bit more cost effective um, to do. So if people want to get in touch with you, what's the best way for them to do that? Um, well, we have a Facebook page, Tales of Bacon, um, which is at Facebook forward slash Pardon My Bacon. Mm-hmm. Um, and Twitter uh, is also Pardon My Bacon. Twitter is a really good way to get in touch as well. You know, we've got our direct messaging open. So if people do want to get in contact, that's a good way. One great example of someone getting in touch and wonderful things happening uh, was our behind the scenes photographer, Matt Durant, was just some some randomer who, again, lived in York and Mm. liked the look of what we were doing, said, could he come along? Uh, not only did he end up then editing the entire web series, but now he's going to go and do an MA in film oh, nice. at the University of York. Uh, so all of that sprang from just one uh, little direct message on Twitter. So, cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, they're good ways of getting in contact. 
Great. Well, thank you for being on the podcast. <laughs> no, that's okay. It was fun. <laughs>